new to photo editing, let's get your photos looking great with this super simple technique. But if you've opened up photo editors and been a little bit daunted by the magnitude of all the different tools, don't worry, this video is for you. I've got a really simple editing technique which is gonna give you excellent results with the minimum of fuss. In this easy tutorial, we're going to leverage the power of a fantastic tool that analyzes your photo and will make changes to all the important aspects such as color, contrast, exposure, that's the brightness and darkness values in the photo, and it's gonna make all the adjustments to that once we understand how this fantastic tool is working and how easy it is, we can then finesse our edits by using that same tool with a secondary application that we're more in control of. But we'll get to that bit and I promise you, it's gonna be very easy indeed. As a professional photographer with now over 30 years of photo editing experience, I can safely and confidently say that the best photo editing software, particularly for new photo editors, is Luminar Neo. It's very simple to use, but the results are excellent, and it also has the ability to grow with you. So we can start with this simple technique that I'm gonna show you today, and once you get your head around that, you can start adding in all the other tools as you get more confidence along the way. If you haven't got it already, I'll put a discount link in the description below that you're welcome to. You can either subscribe on a monthly basis for a year, two years, or you can buy the software outright. Entirely up to you which way you wanna go. Okay, let me show you this technique. It's gonna work for any type of photo you throw at it. Okay, so I'll double click Luminar Neo to open it up and we're brought into our very clean and clear library of images known as the catalog inside Luminar Neo. Now, if you want to add your photos in, you just need to tell Luminar where they are. So for this example, let's go to folders on the left-hand side here, click the plus icon, navigate to the folder you want to open, and then just click select folder. So as you might be able to tell, these photos have got potential, but currently they are unedited. So the exposure, color, all of that might be off. So I'm gonna double click on this photo here of this boat, and let's say we want to correct that with this technique I was talking about. So easy, all we do is we come up to the edit tab at the top here, we click that, and that's going to change our view and give us access to all of the amazing tools inside of Luminar Neo, but we don't want to worry about any of the extra tools. There's only one we're gonna concern ourselves with, and that is Enhance AI. I have it saved within my favorites, but usually you'll just find that inside the essentials tools here. But this tool is amazing. All we do is open it up and this Accent AI slider right here, we just grab it and we start moving that to the right. Look at that, when we set that at 100 versus zero and we have an unedited photo and just like that, bamho, we've edited it. So here's our before, here's our after. And to do that, I'm just clicking the eye icon here before and after. We also have some options for visualizing our before and after at the bottom. I can click that slider so we can move that left and right just to get a sense of it that way. We can turn that off and then we also have the eye icon next to it as well. So that's another way. So the eye icon in the tool here just shows a before and after of the particular tool that we've applied. The eye icon at the bottom shows us a complete before and after every single tool that we've applied, which in our case is currently just one tool. Okay, let's jump back to the catalog and see if there's another photo that we can demonstrate this on. Like I say, this technique will work on any photo whatsoever. So let's jump into the edit section and see whether we can't improve it with Accent AI again. And look at that, as I boost that up, we get all of that color come back in the sky. It really does a beautiful thing to this photo. So I would say this is a flat, unprocessed photo. And now we've got a really nice result that we could share on social media, print out, do whatever we want with it. So you might be thinking, well, that's all very well and good, but I don't wanna go into every single photo, grab that slider, move it up, and you don't have to. We can bulk apply that effect to all of our photos if we want to, and it's going to individually edit each of those photos based on what's in that photo. So that's a great thing. However, before I show you how to do that, I'd actually make the recommendation that it is worthwhile, particularly in the beginning, to go in to each photo, change that slider and see what the AI algorithm is actually doing to the photo, what changes it making to improve that photo. Because while you're training your eye to see what actually needs to be done to a photo, this is actually a really good tool because you can flick between the before and the after and say, oh, okay, it's intensified the colors. 
that's improved it. Oh, okay, it's boosted up the shadows, and now I can see into those shadows. That's improved it. And so it's a good tool for actually learning how to analyze your imagery as well. But let me show you how to batch process. So we currently have just one application of the Enhance AI tool applied. And we can see that by flipping from this Tools menu here into the Edits section here, which just shows us which edits are applied. We currently have raw edits underneath here and we haven't made any changes. We can just ignore those for now. But as I say, as you develop your skill set, you have a whole host of different options. But don't get intimidated by any of that because the Accent AI slider can actually mimic a lot of what that develop raw setting is doing anyway. So we know that we've got the Enhance AI tool applied. So now if we come back to our catalog section, we can now copy that setting to any other photo. So all I need to do is right click and come to adjustments, copy adjustments. And now let's say that I wanted to edit this photo here. I would just right click on it, come to adjustments and now paste adjustments. And there you go, look at that, what a transformation. If I open that up, we can have a little look at our before and our after, before and after. And you don't have to come down to this eye tool instantly. You can actually press the backslash key on your keyboard and that is gonna do the same thing. And if I jump into the edit section, you're gonna see that here we go, we have enhanced AI applied with the accent AI set to 100. You will have noticed that we also have a Sky AI Enhancer as well, but usually I find adding that in is a little bit too much in conjunction with the Accent AI. You might like to play around with lesser amounts of Accent AI and combine that with Sky Enhancer AI. However, I prefer just to go all in on Accent AI because that's gonna enhance your Sky as well anyway. So that's applying that setting to one photo, but equally we could apply it to as many photos as we like. So I'm just clicking on a photo, then holding the control key on my keyboard and selecting other photos. We can also hold the shift key and click on an end photo, and that's gonna select every photo in that sequence from where I clicked on the first one all the way down to the last one where I'm holding shift and clicking at the same time. Now we have all of these photos selected. What I can do is right click, come to adjustments and paste those adjustments. And you can see Luminar Neo is gonna work its way through those thumbnails, making adjustments to all of those photos. So I would say every single one of those photos has been improved due to that enhanced AI tool being applied. So I'll just press the before, and the after, there we go. Look at all that rich, lovely foliage being brought back in. The sky is enhanced, the waterfall detail is enhanced. It is all looking better. So that is a really powerful and very quick way for you to quickly and easily process all of your photos. But what about when you want to take things to the next level? Well, we can use the same tool in conjunction with what we've already done to improve these photos even further. So if you're ready for that next step, I'll show you this next part of the technique. Again, it's very easy, just slight step up. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, seeing as this waterfall photo is open already, I'll show you on this. So our initial application of Accent AI, which we can see in the Edits tab in this top right, we have Enhance AI with the Accent AI slider pushed all up. So before and after, that's all that we've got going on here. But what if we wanted to bring more attention to the waterfall itself, the subject in this scene? Well, we can add another edition of Enhance AI. So I've just jumped out of the edit section, gone into the tool section, and come down to Enhance AI again. So if I open this, you'll see that the Accent AI slider is set to zero, not 100. And that is because this is a brand new instance of this tool. And you'll see that if I grab the Accent AI slider and boost this up again, we are enhancing what was already enhanced. So we now have two of the Enhanced AI tools affecting this photo, which may be too much, but let's just have a little look for now. So Enhanced AI plus another Enhanced AI. We've got two of them. And if we look at our before and our after, before and after, hopefully you can see that the processing has gone a little bit over the top because we have a double application of this. Now, don't worry if you're sat looking at your screen thinking that photo looks all right to me. You're gonna find that the more you process photos, the more attuned your eye will become 
to assessing whether you've pushed things too far or not far enough. And normally when you're just starting out, the tendency is to go heavy handed. I still take things too far with my edits and have to rein myself in. So it takes a lot of training of your eye to see, well, those colors are oversaturated. You know, hopefully you can clearly see that, but if you can't yet, don't panic. But that's where the second part of the technique comes in because what we're gonna do is try to guide the viewer's eye to the part of the photo that we say is the most important, i.e. the subject in the photo. So whatever has drawn you to pick up your camera in the first place and take a photo, in this case, a waterfall, that is the subject. That's the thing that we've deemed to be most important in the photo. And that is what we're gonna try and guide our viewer's eye to look at. And I'm gonna show you how to do it using the same tool. Okay, I'm gonna click on the first tool so that we can see how this was built up. So this is our original photo. I'll release the eye icon so that we can see that first application of Accent AI. Now we're applying the second instance of Accent AI, which is too much. What we're able to do though, is to say, hey, it's too much over the whole photo, but perhaps we just wanna introduce it over the waterfall. Well, it's easy enough to do that with masking. Please don't get too scared, it's very, very simple. We just click on masking and we want to access a brush. This is gonna allow us to paint in the effect only where we want it. So I'm gonna choose a nice big brush, I don't know, somewhere around 300, that's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna click once on the photo and I'm gonna keep holding down on my mouse and I'm gonna to start to paint over that waterfall and down the stream. So you can see that we've got a pink effect going on over our photo. That represents the mask and wherever it's pink, that is where we're gonna see the effect of this second version of Enhance AI. So I will release and now if I toggle this eyeball tool, you will see that the waterfall and just a slight bit of that surrounding foliage, basically wherever I painted that mask, that is the bit that is changing. And so now if we look at a complete before and after, we have a lovely edit with more emphasis on the subject in our photo. Now, I really hope that made sense to you. If it did, just write made sense in the comments below so I know that we're on track. I'm gonna give you another example, different subject matter, because we've done a lot of landscapes. It's one of the things I love shooting, but this will apply to anything. So if we're dealing with, I don't know, animals, then you're just gonna mask in the animal. Whatever it is that you want to draw attention to in your photo, usually the subject of the photo, that's what you can apply an additional application of Enhance AI to. So let's have a look at that. Let's come back to the catalog here. And if I open this photo of these bulls here, we're gonna be able to see if I jump into the edit section and come to the edits tab here, you can see that we already have Enhance AI applied at 100%. And that is because I copied and pasted this effect over from that initial edit that we did. So we currently have a before and an after, before and after. But let's say that we really wanna make this guy the hero of the piece. Well, as we did before, we're just gonna add another edition of Enhance AI with the Accent AI pushed all the way to 100. And as you can see from the edits tab here, we've got the doubling effect of Enhance AI where I can see a before and after before and after. Now, if we look at the photo as a whole, again, it's too much everywhere, before and after, just too much. However, what we've got going on with this guy right here, this might well be perfect. And so that's where we're able to come in, use our masks, and we have various ways that we can mask things, but we're just gonna keep things nice and easy and say, we just wanna paint this effect in over this guy here. So I've just painted over the top of him, before and after, there we go. What if we wanted a bit of the effect over this guy in the background, but not with the same intensity of our main character looking at the camera? It's really easy to do. All we need to do is select the strength setting here and just drop it down from 100. So let's go for about halfway. And now we can just paint over this guy as well. And we're saying apply half of this effect over this cow in the background. So here's our before, here's our after. Oh, that's the complete before and after with this particular tool before and after, before and after. 100% of the effect on this guy, 50% on the guy in the background, before and after. Okay, let's just do one more example to make sure you guys have got this. So I've just jumped back into the catalog 
And let's come up to some shots with people in. Let's do this one of my daughter here. We just need to come to the edit tab. Completely unprocessed now. So let's go from the beginning. Enhance AI, just crank that accent AI slider up. And there you go. We have an edit already before and after, before and after. I feel like the background foliage has just got a little bit too intensified in comparison to my daughter, the main subject. So if we want her to really pop out, let's add another instance of this. And it's easy enough to do just by closing the first tool down, reopening it, and here we go. We've got a second instance where I'm gonna grab the slider and push it all the way up. Now you'll notice that the background's really got far too intense before and after. So I want to isolate it just around her. Now I'm gonna show you a different way to do that this time. So the previous way I showed you was with the paintbrush and painting it over her. There is an even easier way to handle this when you have people in your scene. We are going to leverage the AI inside Luminar Neo. So I've clicked Mask AI and Neo analyzes my photo and now it's found different elements. So all I want to do is say, hey, mask the human. I'm gonna click human and now it's created a really nice mask around my daughter. You can see that it's even picked out strands of hair. Very, very accurate indeed. Not always perfect, as you can see under her arm here and here, there's a little bit. You can always clean that up by combining it with your brush as well, but I'm keeping things really simple for this one and it's not gonna matter for this at all. So now if I scroll back out and I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out, but you can also use your zoom down here. Fit to screen is a great option. And we come up to edits. You can see that we have two versions of Enhance AI again. So this was our original one affecting the whole photo. And then I've doubled down on the effect only on my daughter. So before and after, see how she is now getting that pop. So if we look at the photo edit as a whole, we can see where we came from and where we got to, the before and after that was achieved with the absolute minimum fuss. This really is a super simple technique and a great way to get started with your photo editing. Like I say, you can actually learn a lot from analyzing what this Enhance AI tool is doing to your photo to improve it, make it look better, like is it boosted up the colors? Um, what changes is it making and where to the photo? And that will actually start to train your eye for better photo editing in the future. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope it's been helpful to you. Like I say, if you're brand new to photo editing, this is a great way to start. If you wanna take things to the next level with your photo editing, I'd recommend checking out that video right there where I walk through the basics of Luminar Neo and certainly on my channel, subscribe because I go over heaps more in-depth techniques for making the most of your photo editing. Thanks for watching guys. I'm Anthony Turnham and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.